For this video, I'm going to be in St. Ignace, Michigan. It is on the other side of Mackinac City across the Mackinac Bridge. Nobody ever talks about it, but it's a pretty cool town. Let's go check it out. Right across the blue waters of the Mackinac Strait from Mackinac City is the city of St. Ignace. St. Ignace is a bigger town than Mackinac City, but that isn't saying much as Mackinac City is home to only 800 or so year-round residents. In this video, we're going to see what St. Ignace is like by driving around and seeing what we can. We'll not only try and see the touristy downtownish part of town, but all parts of town. Where I begin the video is at a place called Bridgeview Park, which is just west of town. If you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoy this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos on other places like what you'll see here can be found in my Michigan playlist, my Upper Peninsula playlist, my USA Small Towns playlist, my Tourist Town playlist, or in my Great Lakes playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. And as I turn into here, this is where the Father Marquette National Memorial is. I don't get a good shot of the memorial as it's back in the woods, but there is a memorial here that pays tribute to the early French explorer Jacques Marquette. The reason for the memorial is that Marquette was one of the first explorers to come through the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and document the land by putting it on a map. You can think of him as being similar to Lewis and Clark. Here's the path that goes to the memorial, and other than that, there's not much back here other than trees and maybe some views of the Mackinac Bridge. Just outside of the memorial, you have the junction of US Highway 2 and I-75. Since the UP is a highly visited area, but at the same time there aren't many cities and towns in the Upper Peninsula, you have several hotels and convenience stores near the exit. It's also one of the areas that has the highest amount of traffic in the Upper Peninsula, as the Mackinac Bridge is the only connector between the Lower and Upper Peninsulas, and US Highway 2 is the main route to head west towards most of the rest of the UP. Also, you better make sure that your gas tank is at least half full before you leave any decently sized town up this way, as it can be an hour drive between gas stations at times. When it comes to the history, you know, before the flannel shirt wearing brigade took over the land with their cases of Mountain Dew in one hand and packing that chew with the other, those kinds of people, it was Native Americans that occupied this area. In these parts, it was the Ojibwe and Potawatomi tribes that occupied the land. St. Ignace is actually the second oldest city in Michigan, just after Sault Ste. Marie. European settlers first came through all the way back in 1671. St. Ignace is named after St. Ignatius of Loyola. However, shortly after the Europeans came through, St. Ignace grew through the fur trading industry. Later on in the 1800s, the logging and commercial fishing industries took off. By 1890, St. Ignace had 2,700 residents. That might not seem like much now, but back in the day it was quite a bit, especially for rural northern Michigan and it's also more than the town has today. The town never grew much more than 2,700 as it hit its peak population of only 3,300 back in 1960. Today, the town continues to lose year-round residents, just like most other Upper Peninsula cities and towns. However, St. Ignace is the county seat of Mackinac County, and it's worth mentioning that Mackinac County hasn't seen as sharp of a population decline as the city has. By the way, I-75 just kind of cuts right through the middle of town and it's kind of weird because you don't see it that often with towns that are this small, but it makes sense because there's only so many paths that I-75 could have took with the Mackinac Bridge. On the south side of the strait, I-75 also cuts right through the middle of the smaller Mackinac City. This is St. Ignace High School, home of the Saints. Niche.com ranks the public schools as a B-, so those could be better maybe, but it's a better grade than what we see the website give many other rural public school systems. Among the most notable alumni is NFL defensive end Joe Ostman, who's in a class of his own at St. Ignace as he played football for Central Michigan and went undrafted to the Philadelphia Eagles in 2017.
Well, next I head towards downtown St. Ignace, which offers a lot of touristy shops and restaurants. St. Ignace isn't as popular as the other nearby Mackinac City is on the south side of the Strait, but it's not a bad place to check out if you're on a weekend getaway in northern Michigan during the summer. You can also take a ferry from St. Ignace to Mackinac Island, just like you can in Mackinac City. My theory as to why St. Ignis doesn't get talked about as much as Mackinac City does is because Mackinac Island is the real tourist destination in this area. And with Mackinac City being on the south side of the bridge, it's easier for most people to access Mackinac Island from Mackinac City as most people who are visiting this area are coming from the more populated areas of southern Michigan. By the way, to the right, we're passing by a building that serves all government functions for Mackinac County. It's the courthouse, it's the sheriff's office, it's the county clerk's office, and it's the county jail, and I'm sure it serves other purposes too. It's not a weird looking building, but it is in an odd spot as it looks like it belongs in a downtown area with other buildings that look like it. Out here, it's just kind of chilling off of the embankment of I-75 and across the street from single family ranch homes with big yards. Weird spot. Here, you get the full pure Michigan experience with the bumpy road full of patch jobs over what used to be potholes. At the time of me filming this video, I was using the brand new GoPro Hero 10. In October of 2021, the software update for the new camera was not out yet, therefore the usually buttery smooth stabilization that you're used to seeing in my videos wasn't able to happen on this trip as the stabilization needed the new software update in order to work properly. At the time that I'm uploading this video, that software software update has gone through with GoPro, so now you can feel free to purchase a good product in a GoPro Hero 10 if you wish by clicking on my affiliate links down below in which I do receive a very small percentage of the revenue as a commission fee. Meanwhile, right over here you have some athletic facilities that are used by the high school. All right, so we'll be in downtown St. Ignace pretty shortly. We'll be up by the water where the ferry is to Mackinac Island and basically where all the excitement is. I do take a long way to get there just to make sure that I can get the whole stretch of the waterfront. What an awful tour video. All you're doing is driving around in circles and you haven't even gone to the main town. Why would anybody watch this? <laughs> You're a real piece of work, aren't you? <laughs> oh man, well, I'll tell you what, I've actually been working on my skills to manipulate people to want to click on my videos, only to continue watching them to be disappointed later on. So you saying that just makes me feel like I've been accomplishing my goal. So I do appreciate that compliment. Thank you. Back here in the woods to the right, however, you have a state park, actually. It's called Straits State Park, after the Mackinac Straits, huh? Get it? Yeah, that wasn't really a... Didn't take much to think of that name there, did it? Well, it's actually really just a camping ground, and not much else to it, really.
And here's the main drag through St. Ignis, where you'll find all of your quirky shops where you can buy your northern Michigan fudge from. You also have a marina and a ferry that takes you out to Mackinac Island. I can't lie, the waterfront really does look pretty with its crystal clear blue water and the fall colors in the background. It's really nice. It was pretty cold though when I was up here, so if you do come in the fall, just know that it's going to be cold. Another thing is that if you're lucky, this can be a good spot to see the northern lights. It's pretty rare that you can see them this far south, but you'll be able to see them once or twice a year down this way. And if you do come up here to see them, I would stay on the south side of the Mackinac Strait over by Mackinac City because you have to be looking north. And with the Mackinac Strait, it gives you a larger horizon to see further away. I myself attempted to see the Northern Lights about a month or so after filming this video, and I went across the bridge only to talk to the people that were working at the toll booths, assuming that they lived nearby. That was a dumb decision though, because all they did was say, Don't believe everything that you see on the internet. The Facebook post that's getting passed around with the Northern Lights over the Mackinac Bridge is photoshopped. And I had no idea what they were talking about. It must have been something among their own social circles that they were bitching about. But I also ended up asking someone who worked at a gas station and he acted like I was speaking a foreign language. Now, I have a hard time believing that all of the folks up this way are that grumpy towards tourists that are hoping to see the Northern Lights. So I won't judge all of you year round locals, but those handful of people that I talked to on that day did justify my claims of how there's a large amount of Mountain Dew drinking hill jacks in these rural parts. Anyway, if you're interested in seeing the Northern Lights before making the long drive up here, assuming that it's a long drive for you to come up here, you should invest in a nice camera that does well in low light settings, as sometimes I hear that the cameras can capture auroras that sometimes the human eye won't be able to see. But yes, don't listen to those trolls working at the toll booths if you come across them too. There wouldn't be so many pictures on social media being shared by credible news organizations on the auroras over the Mackinac Strait if the Northern Lights couldn't be seen here. Of course, if you also plan on coming up to try to see the northern lights, make sure you pay attention to the weather forecast, make sure that there are clear skies, and of course, make sure that an aurora is actually forecasted for that night. This place is so far away from everywhere else that it's most likely a four hour plus drive from no matter where you are, and it can definitely be a disappointment if you drive four hours away only to come back with nothing because you also have to drive four hours back, so that's an eight hour drive that you just wasted. And a full night of sleep because it's gonna be at night when you make the drive, of course. So yeah, that's where the Mackinac Island Ferry is, and as you can see, plenty of shops and restaurants, plenty of places to buy fudge, plenty of places to stay at, some bed and breakfasts, you have some more hotels further up along the road, along with some other touristy things up ahead.
Up ahead, you really just have a big parking lot and you have a couple of boat ramps, but it's also a nice view of the small little bay that St. Ignis is off of. Well, I do end the video at a tourist attraction that's known as Castle Rock. It's not much of a hike to get to the top as you park in this parking lot here and you climb only a few flights of stairs. And I'm sure the views from the top of Castle Rock, of the Mackinac Bridge, the Mackinac Straits, Mackinac Island, and rural Mackinac County are absolutely fantastic. I'm sure you can see Mackinac City from the top as well. Well, the rock rises 195 feet above water level and apparently you can see 20 miles out from the top. Anyway, I do end the video here and if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out my Upper Peninsula playlist, my Great Lakes playlist, my Tourist Town playlist, or my Michigan playlist. Remember that if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace.